Hey y'all, what's up? It's me, Miss Ruby, and today we are gonna play in some hair. I've got six packs of these 18 inch pre-twisted crochet braids from toyotress.com. And I actually put these in last fall, told you guys I was gonna do a hair tutorial for them and have just been too busy. So here it is, it's gonna be pretty simple. If you don't know how to install your own crochet faux locks, then pay close attention because there are some details that you are not going to want to miss. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So first you are going to need this tool which is the crochet braid hook and a comb. And I'm gonna show you guys briefly my braid down just because it is important how you braid your hair down. It is important um, how you part your braids because this is gonna determine how your braids fall. Uh, typically I would add hair, but I wanted to try it out by not adding any hair at all because I've seen some people on YouTube do it this way. And ever since this video, I actually haven't really been adding hair because it worked out. So I'm just braiding this first braid back and uh, then I'm going to put another braid alongside of it, join them together, make one long braid in the back. You're gonna see the whole thing right now. And the whole purpose of this is because whenever you're gonna create like a closure, what I mean when I say a closure is I just mean an area where you expect to part your hair. Behind that part, you're gonna want it to look like it's closed off because you're not gonna want it to look like just one long gap in between two rows of crochet braids going down your entire head, if that makes sense. So that's what that's for. Next, I'm gonna to continue to add the rest of the braids going in a backward direction. And if you see right here, this means that this is where I'm gonna kinda of close it off and create like the perimeter trail of braids along the back. It's moving really quickly because I'm just assuming y'all know what this is. And if you don't, then just ask me below. I have other videos with more detail. Oh, say what up to the baby, y'all. This was like six months ago and she is still all over me, just the same. <laughs> So here's the final breakdown. And as you can see, I joined most of them together. That way I have multiple opportunities to create different closures. Now, what you're seeing right now is the bottom of these braids, they tend to unravel because my hair was pretty short. So if you're dealing with short hair like me that gets pretty loose in your braids, you're gonna wanna add some hair toward the end of the braids. That way it helps them to stay together. So I'm showing you an example of what that looks like here. And then I'm gonna take all of the braids, I'm gonna cross them over one another, I'm going to get a needle and thread, and I'm gonna stitch them down. Now, sometimes people do crochet braids and they don't stitch the braids down, they just like latch hook hair through and it kind of creates its own security. But I don't really like that method because I've done it a couple of times and my hair just like eventually came out. I don't know if it's just my hair or the size of the crochet braids I was adding, so I would rather stitch it down, but it doesn't have to be like as neat and tight as you would stitch it on braids for a weave especially because i'm doing crochet faux locks so this is going to be a really big style i just want to make sure that they're secure so they can last So now I'm gonna show you guys a close-up of the crochet hair. This is really important because this hair in particular gave me some trouble. It was really pretty hair, but it definitely gave me some trouble at the loop area. And you're gonna see what I mean in just a couple minutes when I install it. But basically, you're gonna to want to find a way to open this up. You can either use your fingers if they work. For me, my fingers weren't really working that well. So I had to like get like a clip to get, dig into it and then stick my fingers in afterward to fully open it up because when you go to try and install them as you can see right here if it's not fully opened up then you're going to cause it to like mat and tangle so it's really as simple as just adding the hair to the hook and pulling it through right or so it should be but look at what happened right here when I pulled the braid down and tried to just secure it at the base. You see how like that curly piece just kind of loosened up? That kept happening to me so many times. So I had to like figure out, cause I had did a couple of test braids that I didn't show you guys, but I basically had to realize that after I pulled it through, because it does have this curly hair attached to it and it tends to kind of like look all loose and just not neat. After I pull it through, I twisted it a time or two to like tighten it as much as I could while still allowing my finger to fit through it, which is kind of like a little challenge <laughs> because it needs to be like as tight of a loop as possible 
so that when you go to tighten it at the base, there's not a lot of opportunity for error. So, in, and as you see, there still was a little bit left hanging out. So what I did was I just went in with the crochet hook and I just grabbed that extra piece of hair and kind of just pulled it through so it could be stuffed down. I had to do that a couple of times throughout the process, but for the most part, I was able to get them tightly wound up enough to where it was like tight enough at the base. So now I'm just going through and adding them. As you guys can see, there are gaps in between a lot of these. Um, that's super important because you don't really want this hairstyle to be way too full. If you were to put a piece or a braid to cover up every single piece of your cornrows, then you would have like double the amount of hair that's in my head. The challenge with this is you have to choose wisely where you want to toss your hair from side to side and where you want your part to show. Because as you can see right here, I'm basically choosing this off-centered part and so I'm putting the braids close together because I'm going to eventually close this up and use this as my part area. But when I try to toss it to the side, you know, just considering that I might wanna wear my hair a little different, you see all this gap, that is a no-no. Mm -mm. So I ended up having to go in and add hair to multiple places because I wanted to give myself the freedom and flexibility to be able to toss my hair around. Um, but you know, you don't necessarily have to do that. If you find an area that you like, just stick to that area, it allows for less bulky hair at the end of this style. So now I'm just going in and adding the braids to the back. Again, you're gonna to wanna to space them out as much as you can, but towards the top where it's going to cover, that's where you're gonna to wanna to put the most amount of hair so that it can, you know, at least give the illusion that it's like fuller than it actually is. And this is what the finished look looks like. <laughs> As you guys can see, it wasn't really that complicated. I got so many compliments on this hair. I still am because I'm like barely posting pictures late to Instagram. And a lot of you guys say you love this color on me as I do as well. I'm low key thinking about dyeing my actual hair this color. <laughs> but these braids were super, super, super cute. They did well in my hair. I just took them out because I kind of got tired of it, but otherwise I loved it. So check out the description below so you can go to toyotrust.com and get you some girl. I hope you enjoyed this brief tutorial. Be sure to check out some other videos on my hair where I have topics on womanhood, relationships, motherhood, as well as more hair tutorials. Remember to be you, love you, make it all beautiful, and you will see me on the next video.